Hi, in this video we're going to talk about deferred swaps, so we're going to do that through a couple of examples. So let's look at this first example. Uh, we've got a, uh, a term structure of interest rates, the one-year one year spot rate's 1%, two-year spot rate's 2%, and so forth. And we want to determine the swap rate for a two-year deferred four-year interest rate swap. So what does that mean? Well, we got a four-year interest rate swap, and we're not going to do anything for two years. That's what the two-year deferred means. Uh, so for two years, we're not going to do anything, and then we're going to start swapping at, after two years. So at time three, uh, at time three, the uh, uh, the amount of the uh, interest payment at time three would be the notional amount times the forward rate from time two to time three. They didn't tell me anything about the notional amount in this problem. If I go back, there's, there's nothing mentioned of notional amount. So just assume that the notional amount is constant. Uh, you'll see in just a second it's, uh, uh, it'll simplify. So at time three, I have a notional amount. I'm sorry, I have an interest payment of uh, the notional amount times the forward rate from time two to time three. Uh, and then likewise at time four, I'm going to have a notional amount from time uh, times the forward rate from time three to time four, and I want to swap those for uh, the notional amount times some fixed interest rate called the swap rate, the swap rate I. And what we saw in a previous video is that if the notional amounts are the same, then they're going to cancel off. And so the, no uh, the reason it wasn't mentioned in this problem, um, well, it wasn't mentioned, we assume that the notional amounts are constant and the notional amounts will ca cancel off, so I don't really even need to keep up with the notional amounts. Okay, so I want to swap these interest payments, the interest payments on, based on the forward rates, uh, I want to swap those with interest payments based on uh, the swap rate, the fixed swap rate I, and I want to do it in a fair way. And the fair way is you take the present value of each of those and you set them equal to each other. So the present value of the forward rates uh, at, at time zero would be the forward rate from time two to time three. I need to discount from time three back to, 10 to time zero, so I'll multiply that times uh, the V sub three cubed, and likewise with the payment at time four. And I get a similar expression for uh, when, I, when I take the present value of the uh, of the uh, swap rates I. And then I solve for I, I do so by just factoring out an I on the right hand side of the equal sign, I factor out an I, divide by the rest, and this is what we get as the, uh, as the swap rate. So now, uh, at this point, uh, you have enough information, you can go ahead and calculate what those forward rates are, but it's, it, they're going to be tedious calculations and there's going to be long decimals and stuff like that. So there's a, you know, I've mentioned in previous video, there's a way to simplify the calculation if you'll just take a moment to do a symbolic compu computation first. It'll, it'll make your, your uh, uh, c calculator computations uh, much easier. So I'm going to put some brackets around each term in the numerator. And I've, as I've mentioned before, when you take a forward rate, you multiply it by its appropriate discount factor, it becomes, it's equivalent to, or it's equal to the difference between uh, V factor. So for instance, that first, uh, the, the, the first uh, term in the, in the numerator uh, becomes just a V2 squared minus a V3 cubed, and the second term in the numerator is just a V3 cubed minus a V4 to the fourth. And we've talked about that before. Now, this is going to be an easier calculation to do. And in fact, when you have, no, when you have level notional amounts, uh, you, you end up with a telescoping uh, sum in the numerator. The V3s just add out. And so all, all I'm left with is that the swap rate is this uh, V sub 2 squared minus V sub 4 to the fourth divided by the sum of V sub 3 cubed and V sub 4 to the fourth. And at this point, you just plug in the numeric values for these things. Uh, for the V2, V3, and V4, plug in the numeric value, and I got this 6.009% uh, uh, interest rate, uh, or swap rate. 6.009% would be the swap rate. Okay, uh, so now let me switch, let me change it up a little bit. Let's, uh, uh, let's go back to a, a similar example, but s setup is the same, but now instead of uh, uh, having level notional amounts, let's assume that the notional amount for year three is 100,000 and the notional amount for year four is 200,000. So a little bit on terminology first. If the notional amounts are increasing over time, the swap is called an accreting swap. So if you ever see the word accre accreting swap, all it means is that you have non-level notional amounts and those notional amounts are increasing over time. Remember the notional amount is just what you think it can be, it, it's, it's, it's what the interest is going to be based on for the following year. It's like the balance in the account. What the interest is going to be based on, remember, is the balance at the beginning of the year. So that's, like, that's what the notional amounts are. And if the notional amounts are increasing over time, accreting means growing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if the notional amounts are decreasing over time, the swap is called an amortizing swap. Remember, when you amortize a loan, you're paying down the loan. So you think of the notional amounts 
uh, or the balances is going down. And so if the notional amounts are going down, you're ca it's called an, an amortizing swap. Now, be a little bit careful with the notation here. It says the notional amount for year three. Now, the year th is 100000 So the 100000 is what the interest payment is going to be based on for year three. So that's actually a time two value. So that means the notional amount at time two is 100000 and the notional amount at time three is... Um, is 200,000. Okay, so I'm going to set it up in a timeline. I'm going to do everything kind of symbolic first. So here's, here's symbolically what my timeline's going to look like. Uh, and I'm going to swap those, uh, those interest payments at time three and time four. Remember, this was a two-year deferred four-year interest rate swap. So it's a four-year interest rate swap, but two years deferred. So the interest swaps actually take place at years three and four. And so uh, I'm going to trade these uh, the, the interest payments that are shown now for interest payments that are based off of a fixed interest rate. Uh, and again, I'm going to do this symbolically, and then I'll plug in the numbers at the end. Um, and so I want to do the swap in a fair way. Fair means you take the, you know, the present values of the two, interest, two sets of interest payments are going to be equal. So the, uh, the present value based off of the forward rates is going to be what's shown here. And then I set that equal to the present value based off of the fixed interest rate, I. And I solve for I. Easy to solve for I because on the right-hand side, you just factor out an I from that two, those two terms. Factor an I, divide by everything else, and, and that's what we get as the, uh, as the swap rate. Now, at this point, uh, again, as I mentioned before, you could go ahead and calculate what the forward rates are and just plug in all the numbers. Or if you'll take a moment to, to, to use this, this little fact that we've talked about before and symbolically simplify the calculations a little bit, it will make it a, a lot easier calculation when you get to plugging in the numbers and get a numeric, numeric answer. So I'm going to put in these, these uh, brackets again. I don't really need them, but I'm going to put them in just to emphasize that that F sub 2, 3, the forward rate from time 2 to 3, discounted from time 3 back to time 0 is just the difference between the V2 squared and the V3 cubed. And likewise, uh, the forward rate from time 3 to time 4 discounted back to time 0 is the difference between the uh, V3 cubed and the V4 cubed. Okay, so now at this point, uh, that makes it a lot easier. I don't have forward rates to actually calculate, and forward rates can get tedious to calculate. So I don't have any forward rates to calculate anymore, so I just plug in the numeric values for all of these things. And what do I end up with? A uh, 6.351% uh, number there for that. Uh, for that swap rate. Okay, so uh, so that does it. Actually, that does it for the uh, for uh, the numeric type problems for the entire course. So pat yourself on the back. This is great. You're finished the course from a numeric for numeric type problems. I've got another uh, video that I'm going to do that uh, has to do with uh, key interest rates and 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 some other kind of types of problems that you're more likely to see in a um, maybe like a true-false type question or, uh, or something like that. But numerically, we're, we're, we're done with the types of problems uh, that, that you're going to see on, on the FM exam. So congratulations. All right, so I'll see you in the next video with that one, uh, one extra uh, topic on uh, uh, some other things, maybe some key interest rates. Uh, okay, I'll see you in the next video, though.